Hi everyone, it's Katie and today is day 13 of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot Challenge and today our prompt is the five tarot decks we plan on working with in 2017. Now as with yesterday, I'm going to talk about the tarot decks that I don't know very well. Um, most of these I've kind of had around for a while um, and I've decided not to move them on just because I'm not sure. I know there's potential there for a relationship but I haven't given these decks the time to establish whether they really are an important part of my collection yet or not. So these are not the five tarot decks I'll be working with in 2017, these are five of the tarot decks I'll be working with in 2017. An important distinction. So the first I'll talk about is the Dreams of Gaia. This only arrived today when I'm filming this. Um, I haven't even opened it yet, I just took the shrink wrap off so I could show the deck in the video. So I haven't even gone through the cards. I'm going to kind of take my time and do that a little bit later today. This wasn't a deck I was planning on getting but after hearing about it and seeing it so much the past few months it's just intrigued me. It's piqued my interest and I'm curious. Um, so I found a copy cheap on eBay. Um, brand new so I picked it up and I guess I just want to find out. I want to find out what this deck means to me. If it does mean anything. If it doesn't that's cool but I want to try it. The second deck is the Mariel. Gemma sent this to me last year. Gosh, probably like six months ago, maybe even more. I'm really bad with time, Gemma. I'm sorry. I've had this for ages. I haven't shuffled the cards. This is one of those decks, I've been saying this quite a bit um, in this challenge, that I get intimidated. Um, by the reputation of the deck and also by the guidebook of a deck. Um, and so I feel like I'm not good enough, I'm not ready yet and I just don't touch it. This is one of those decks um, and I just want to work out this year just as with the Dreams of Gaia and the rest of these decks I want to try it out. Um, if it's not for me that's okay but I really just want to see. The next deck is the Babylonian Tarot. This is another one I've had for quite a while. The main reason I haven't worked with this one yet is a little bit of the intimidation. The guidebook's pretty chunky but primarily because I got this deck because Lilith's in it and because a big part of Lilith's myth does stem from Babylonian history. So my work with this deck and my intention for working with this deck was always based on reverence um, and of getting to know Lilith and the context of her story. So I really did want to kind of get into the book with this one more than just not feeling like I wasn't ready for it but because that was the whole purpose of me getting this deck was to understand the stories and the context. And a lot of you guys might know, I've really struggled reading um, for quite a big chunk of this past year, 2016. So this deck always kind of just sat on my shelf and I always kind of said, all right, I'll get to you when I can. I get to you when I have the concentration and the energy levels. I'm really hopeful that I will be able to do that this year. The next deck I plan on working with in 2017 is the Tarot de saint Croix by Lisa de saint Croix. Um, I got this deck in a trade. It had been on my wish list for quite a while. Um, but when it got here, it was right in the middle of when I just wasn't doing really well. And I just haven't ever gone back to it. And now that I have it, um, I'm not sure whether it's because of that experience, first meeting it when I wasn't well, um, or whether, you know, I was just wrong about this being a deck for me. It just feels slightly uncomfortable, like physically. Um, when I look at this deck and when I touch this deck. And perhaps it's the colours, like the orange is really um, quite harsh almost. So perhaps that's it, maybe I'll have to trim it. I'm not sure if that's something I want to do though. I do love this death card though. But I do think it's beautiful and obviously I wanted it because it was on my wish list. I just feel so not at all connected with it, which is not at all what I expected. But as we all know, not all connections can happen spontaneously. Some of them we have to work for. And I want to just give this deck a chance this year. Um, and as I've said already, if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Now, there are, are a number of other decks that could have fitted into this fifth slot. Um, some are decks that I got in trades and that are beautiful aesthetically, um, that I just don't feel a connection to. Um, that's like things like the Wild Unknown and the Prisma Visions. But I haven't been able to let go of them because, you know, they're not easy to get in Australia. And they are beautiful. <laughs> um, I just, I haven't connected with them at all. So those are decks that I want to work with. It's just that I'm not really looking forward to trying to work with them. So what I've chosen instead 
is the Sacred Rose. This is a deck that I'm excited to work with. This is one of the many decks that I got in that big deck haul at the beginning of 2016. And I absolutely adore it. It reminds me of a cross of my Fantastical Tarot and the Tower of the She. Um, feels a bit alien, a bit fey, really vibrant. I think it's beautiful. I genuinely do. There's the backing. And I am lucky enough to have also gotten the like companion book, not the little white book, but the extra companion book, which um, like a lot of companion books is out of print now. And I think like with the Babylonian and a few other decks, I had put off using this deck because I felt like I had to read the book first. A lot of it seems pretty traditional. There's nothing super crazy in here that I don't recognize at all. Um, there's no reason why I couldn't jump in and at least try. Um, I mean obviously the companion book is always a really interesting um, valuable resource to have um, but I think when it becomes more limiting than it does useful, helpful, that's not a good thing. So this is a deck that I'm really excited to hunker down and get to know because I really do feel like this is a deck that I'm going to get along with. So that's a quick look at five of the decks that are right up at the top of my list to work with and get to know in 2017. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And until tomorrow, much love. Bye.